Isn't that Grace Jones over there? Ah, oh, please. No! No! E -me beats. E -me beats. This is a lot of more magnificent beats. Thank you. 
Uh, for once again, for those who are tuning in, I have Raji in the building, and she's here to tell her story because we want to set an online radio awareness for you guys. So tune in real quick and grab your popcorn, grab your shades and your little juices, and pull up out of radio. So, Raji, <laughs> where do we begin? Oh my God! Well, it's a really long story, honey. But let's see. I, I think um, I, I'll start from like the beginning, or pretty much the beginning. Although I'm not going to tell you what year that was, because you never ask the lady how old she is. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Not a day over twenty-one, darling. A, a lady never <laughs> reveals her secrets. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Um, let's but, go into, let's go into, you know, when did you first come out? Sure, sure. Well, okay, you know, I tell people all the time that I feel like I was born this way. Um, tribute to Lady Gaga. Um, but no, really, I mean, from the beginning, I, I felt like there was something different about me. And I would say it was about the age of four when the kids in the neighborhood started to call me faggot and sissy. Uh, of course, I didn't know what these names meant, but it was like they were already seeing it in me before I even knew what it was. And, um, you know, school was really hard because, of course, there was a lot of bullying and that sort of thing. And growing up, actually, I identified as an effeminate gay male. I didn't really realize I was trans until I got into my 20s. Okay. And, yeah, and then I started to connect the dots. Uh, and I thought about things that I did growing up, like I used to take the basketball my dad bought me, and I put it in my stomach in my room, and I pretend like I was pregnant. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. But, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, stimulate pregnancy and, and then play like I was having the baby and all of that. And I was like, okay, that's definitely a transgender marker. Okay. And then when I got into my teens and I started um, fantasizing, whenever I was fantasizing about being with another guy, in the fantasy, I always had breasts and a vagina. But I didn't even realize I was doing it. It was like just second nature. Right. And so I connected to dots, and that's when I realized, wait a minute, you're not, you're not gay, you're transgender. And so that's when I um, started to take the steps to, to kind of transition. But it was a slow pro process. Um, I lived androgyny for some years where I was kind of like straddling the fence. And then, yeah, and then like in my mid-20s is when I started to um, do the hormones and really start to transition. Wow. So, um, was it was was it a hard transition? Was it easy? Was it? Baby, I I say this. You know what? No one goes to sleep a man at night and wake up in the morning a woman. It is a very difficult process. <laughs> you cannot just put on a dress and be a woman. It takes a lot. And um, it was it was difficult and difficult on so many different levels because not only for myself just dealing with like okay the type of makeup I needed to use and my, how I want my hair and you know the physical part of it but also you know dealing with family issues you know the family had a hard time with it um, and even just dealing with the stigma that a lot of us trans people deal with on a day to day basis. The Discrimination, that sort of thing. So, definitely a process. Wow, definitely interesting as well. Oh, thank you. Well, honey, this this skin is tough now, honey. I got some tough skin. You know, I always say if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. So, yes, yes definitely. So, you're here to talk about a specific topic today. Yes, I am. Yes, let's 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 start that conversation real quick because we want to, you know, we want to let everybody know, you know, based on experience, it's the best yeah, sure. way to learning. So, what is what was your experience? Mm, well, okay, you know, well, for me, let's start with a good experience and then some, and then we'll bring it into you know what had happened. Mm -hmm, definitely. Well, you know, like as far as the transition is concerned, um, you know, you usually start with hormones. But hormones 
Muslims only do so much. And if you really want to take it to the full extent and completely transition, you usually have to do some sort of facial and body work. And, you know, for a lot of us girls, we just don't have the resources to do it the right way, and the right way being going to a plastic surgeon, certified plastic surgeon, and getting the work done. So a lot of us girls ended up doing the black market route, which was going and getting getting pumped. And pumped meaning pumped with um, silicone. Pump, yeah. So those yeah. Just so you know, um, it's where you basically go and you get silicone pumped into your face, uh, injected, I should say, into your face, uh, into your breast, into your hips, into your buttocks, to kind of, well, for the face, it's to kind of feminize you more. Um, and then for the for the body, it's to make you more voluptuous and shapely like a woman. So um, I ended up going that route. I mean, it was a while. I did the hormones. I was basically living as a woman. But how long you know, were you on the hormones for? Oh my God! Um, I started hormones. I would say like in my mid twenties, and I was taking hormones for a few years. And um, it did some, you know, I got little, I called them my 13-year-old titties. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it gave me. But, honey, I'm a big girl, and I needed, I didn't need a... monstrosity. Exactly. I sure did. I, I, could, I didn't need the, the B cup. I needed the D cup, honey. Yes. <laughs> so in order to take, to continue the process, I had to... Well, I decided to go that route and go and get pumped. Okay. Now, uh -huh. now, my story is a little different. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, before we go into that, did, did the process of getting pumped, did that, did that hurt or was it painful? <laughs> it's painful. Yeah, it's painful, honey. I, you know how they say beauty is pain? Well, yes, uh -huh. it is. And, um, yeah, it's, it, it's usually a burning sensation. And, you know, it's more of the, the, the well, you're getting injected, and then the substance, as it goes in, it, it burns. So it does hurt, you know. Um, but, again, beauty is pain. And, and, and I say that because even if you go to a, a, a certified um, plastic surgeon, you know, there's a certain amount of pain that you have to go through when you go through those different procedures. So... Right. Definitely. And, you know, I wanted to be, not only did I want to be a woman, but I wanted to be, a, I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to, to be like, a, a, you know, a famous movie star uh, because I went to uh, a performing arts school in Philadelphia and it was kind of like the fame, you know, uh, remember the show Fame for all you? <laughs> yes. Well, it was kind of like that, and, um, you know, I had those sort of dreams, but, so not only did I want to be a woman, but I wanted to be a beautiful woman, a you know, you mean a yes, exactly, exactly, confident, uh, and beautiful physically to be on the camera, to be on screen, and so, um, so that motivated me to, to, to go and get this, this done, um, 